Welcome to our educational talks for cardiac rehabilitation, Swansea Bay University Health Board. The topic that we are going to cover today is understanding heart valve disease. During the presentation, we will cover the basic anatomy of where the valves sit within the heart. We will look at what causes valve problems, the signs and symptoms diseased valves can cause, and to look at how these can be treated. We will also discuss cardiac rehabilitation. This presentation should be used for general information purposes only. It is not a substitute for specific medical advice from a GP, specialist or other healthcare professionals and should not be used as such. For individual cardiac rehabilitation advice, please consult your local cardiac rehabilitation team. If you are experiencing any changes in symptoms, please seek advice from either a GP or a specialist. In the event of severe chest pain or breathing difficulties, please dial 999. The heart has four valves, one for each chamber of the heart. The valves make sure that blood flows through the heart in the right direction, like a one-way traffic system. The tricuspid valve and mitral valve are located between the atria, which is in the upper heart chambers, and the ventricles, which are the lower heart chambers. The pulmonary valve and aortic valve are located between the ventricles and the major blood vessels leaving the heart. Diseased valves can affect the flow of blood through the heart. There are two main types of valve problems which we will discuss. Image A shows a normal aortic valve closed tightly. Image B shows a normal aortic valve opened wide. As you can see, the normal valve closes well and opens wide to allow good blood flow. Image C and D shows a diseased aortic valve. Stenosis means a valve that has become stiff. Image C shows how the stenosed valve is unable to open as wide as it should. As a result, it obstructs the amount of blood flow through it. Image D shows what a closed valve can look like when it is diseased. The valve does not close properly and as a consequence blood can leak backwards. This is called regurgitation and you may hear the term leaky valve mentioned. The symptoms you may experience for valve disease are as follows. The narrower or leaky a valve is, the greater the problem is likely to be. Some minor narrowing or leakiness may cause no problems or symptoms, but could become a problem in the future. One of the main symptoms is shortness of breath, mainly on exertion at first, but may occur at rest if it is more severe. Tiredness, dizziness or episodes of fainting may be experienced as a result of your heart not pumping blood efficiently to the rest of your body. It can cause abnormal heart rhythms, which can cause palpitations and other problems. Other symptoms can be swelling of tissues due to fluid congestion. Because the heart has to work harder due to the diseased valve, the blood behind the affected valve will be under increased pressure, which is called back pressure. This may result in the buildup of fluid, possibly in your lungs, ankles or legs, depending on which valve is affected. What are the causes of valve disease and the most common treatments available? Causes of valve problems can be rheumatic fever. In some people, antibodies attack parts of the body, for example, the heart valves. People who have had rheumatic fever as a child may go on to develop symptoms of valve disease as adults. Deposits of calcium called calcification in parts of the valves and this can be common in older people. Congenital heart problems. Some people are born with abnormal valves, but may not experience any symptoms, while in others they may need urgent treatment, or it may worsen over the years. You can also develop an infection of the valve called endocarditis. 
treatments for these are nothing if the symptoms are mild, but you may have regular checkups over the years to monitor the progression of the disease and symptoms. Medication to ease symptoms such as breathlessness. Surgery to stretch, repair or replace the valve may be needed. Your surgeon will have discussed if he or she feels you require surgery or a less invasive procedure based on your overall health risk of surgery. Surgery on a valve can for many people greatly improve their symptoms and quality of life if this has been advised by their surgeon. The two most common options for valve surgery are valve repair and valve replacement. Valve repair is often used for mitral valves that become floppy and leak but are not seriously damaged. Valve replacement is when the diseased valve is replaced with a new valve. The most common types of replacement valves are mechanical, which are artificial valves, or tissue, which are animal valves. The less invasive option is called a transcatheter aortic valve implantation, abbreviated as TAVI. And this may be used if you are an adult and not well enough to have traditional heart surgery. It is a less invasive procedure that is designed to replace a diseased aortic valve. This can be done under general or local anaesthetic. Whether or not you have heart valve surgery and whether the operation is a repair or replacement will depend on many factors. These include the cause of the problem, which valve is affected, how badly the valve is affected, how many of the valves are affected, your symptoms and your general health. When valve surgery has been agreed, the patient and their medical teams will need to decide what type of replacement valve should be used. The choices between a tissue heart valve or a mechanical heart valve. Image A shows a tissue heart valve replacement, also known as biological valves. These are harvested from pigs or constructed from the tissue sac surrounding the heart of a cow. However, human valves, pig and cow valves are very similar in tissue physiology, which makes them a frequent choice for heart valve replacement. Preserved human valves called homographs are also available. Image B shows a mechanical valve replacement. These are made from a very durable material such as titanium and carbon. These are called artificial valves. Choosing between a mechanical or tissue heart valve replacement involves weighing up the advantages and disadvantages of both valve types. Your surgeon and medical team can help guide you with this based on a number of factors and criteria, including your health, your heart and valve condition, your age, gender, lifestyle and life expectancy. Let us take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of a mechanical and tissue valve. Mechanical valves are more durable and expected to last the life of the patient. However, lifelong anticoagulants are required, like warfarin, with mechanical valves. This is to stop blood clots from forming on the valve. With mechanical valves, they can make a quiet clicking sound, which can be disturbing at first, but most people get used to this. Your partner may also be able to hear this clicking at night. Tissue valves in the younger person who are very active physically may place bigger demand on the tissue valve and may cause it to wear out quicker and end up needing another replacement. However, with the advances made in the construction of tissue valves, they do last longer than previous styles used to. An older person receiving a tissue valve may find that this will last a lifetime. People having a tissue valve replacement don't need to take long-term anticoagulants such as warfarin. This is because the valves are made of natural tissue. However, anticoagulants may be recommended for the short period of time following valve surgery, just while the valve settles in. For most tissue valve patients, taking an aspirin a day may be sufficient therapy while others do not need to use any blood thinners. 
a tissue valve would be more suitable for people who have a high risk of clotting or bleeding. And no noise is emanated from a tissue valve, unlike the mechanical valve. On average, it takes between two to three months to fully recover, but this can vary greatly as it depends on your individual condition. So following your heart valve surgery, you should be referred to your cardiac rehabilitation team and receive a telephone contact post-discharge from them. This service offers exercise, health education and well-being support. The aim is to help you recover and resume a normal life as soon as possible, while feeling more confident in self-managing your condition. If you have not heard from your local cardiac rehab team following a recent cardiac event, please ring your main hospital switchboard and ask to be put through to them. They may have had your referral and haven't been able to contact you just yet, or it may be that you were not referred to them due to an oversight. Or, for some areas, they may not be funded to see certain diagnoses or procedures. Most cardiac rehabilitation teams are made up of a number of professionals, and each area may differ from another. The disciplines can range from nurses, physiotherapists, physio assistants, exercise instructors, occupational therapists and their assistants, psychologists and receptionists. If you wish to do some further reading or find out what other educational material is available, please refer to the following websites. Thank you for watching. Any questions, please contact your local cardiac rehabilitation team.